I was talking to somebody the other day and, and we were talking about how one person can have an impact on someone's life. And sometimes we don't always realize that one little thing we do or say can impact somebody else's life. When I was a kid, probably um, eight or 10 years old, my mom used to sit with me and paint. She taught me how to paint. And she was a painter herself and she even did a portrait of me when she was little. And it was that love of painting that she had that transferred to me and I fell in love with art because of that. And I fell in love with portraiture because of that. I was always sketching portraits. I always wanted to do art. I always wanted to do portraits. My dad, however, was an entrepreneur and his influence on me was to build businesses and to create opportunities for people. And so I went that route and I followed a career and I spent a lot of years as an entrepreneur, still doing that, of course. And then um, one day my wife said to me, uh, you need to pick up painting again. You talk about it a lot. You need to be doing it. So I went out and I, I bought some paints and I really didn't know how to use them. I didn't know how to use the materials. Um, I was intimidated by them. And I was painting. I was trying, I remember specifically one painting. I still have it unfinished in my, in my garage. And it's this one painting I was trying to figure out how do I get what's in my head onto the canvas. But I didn't have the technical skills. So that year for my birthday, my wife bought me an art lesson. And the art lesson was an absolute disaster because I went into this art lesson and the guy said, well, just express yourself. Just get color on the canvas. And I said, no, no, I want to learn how to paint something. I want to learn how to paint an object. And he says, oh, no, no, that's old school. That's passe. You don't want to do that. You know, just express yourself. Well, I quit the class because I obviously wasn't uh, getting anywhere with it. Uh, I ended up in a taxi cab and the cab driver was an artist. And I told him the story of my background and how I always wanted to learn to be an artist, but I didn't want to get bad instruction that was going to discourage me. And he said, well, there's this guy in West Palm Beach who studied in Florence for many years, and he studied with Ives Gamel, and he studied with Frank Riley, studied with Madame Simi in Florence for several years, and he said he's a brilliant painter, and he teaches right here in our town. And so I went to see this man, his name was Jack Jackson, and he was a little old gray-haired man, and uh, really gregarious, a lot of fun, and I walked into his class, and there were portraits, six or 10 people painting portraits, uh, and they were copies of old master paintings. And I looked at those, and I thought, that's what I want to do, but I realized, I stood there and watched them for a minute, and I realized that this isn't for me. I said, I, I don't think I can do this. So I turned around and walked out. Fortunately, he happened to look up at the moment and he said, excuse me, excuse me, can I help you? And I said, well, I came because of the cab driver and he told me about you, but I said, I, you know, I can't do this. He said, you can do it, give me 18 months. He said, you'll be doing this in 18 months. And I said, well, you know, I have a full-time job. And he said, look, give me Saturdays and half day on Tuesdays. So I agreed to it, and I did that for several years, and he taught me how to paint. Now, his techniques were not necessarily the traditional academic techniques, but it got me to the point that I needed to where I could produce fairly decent-looking portraits, and that was the starting point. Well, one thing led to another. I spent a lot of time with him. And then I started a dot-com and I had to move to California because the investors said, we're putting all this money into this, we want you to be in California. So Lori and I moved out to San Francisco. And then soon after, she got pregnant with triplets. And she said, you've got to get the smell of oil paint out of the house, I can't stand it. Well, I remembered seeing something, some paintings that were done outdoors that had this amazing charm, but I didn't know what they were called. And I was talking to a friend of mine, his name is Dick Orkin, he's a radio guy, a legend in the radio industry. And I was in Los Angeles visiting and I was telling him about these paintings. He says, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. He said, those are plein air paintings. And he said, you're thinking about the old California Impressionist. I said, well, I don't know, I think so. And he said, come with me. So he took me to a bookstore and he showed me two books. One was called Plein Air Painters from the North, one was called Plein Air Painters from the South. And they were exactly 
what I was looking for. And I, I thanked him because I've been trying to find out what this kind of art was. And I didn't know the term plein air, and, and uh, a lot of people, of course, don't. So I fell in love with that, and of course, I started painting outdoors because I really wanted to uh, get the smell of paint out of the house, but I had to paint. And my wife even said, you know, you're going to have kids, you're going to become a dad, you're going to have to give up painting. And I said, honey, I can't. It's in my blood, it's in my veins, I can't give up painting. I'll go outdoors. So I dragged my big studio easel and a table and big boxes of stuff all the way out to the golf course and painted. And, and it was re very difficult. I, uh, I didn't realize, I thought I was proficient at painting, but I could not paint outdoors. It was completely different. And one thing led to another, and I was in an art store, and they told me about something that led me to an event. And I went to this event for plein air painters. It was called Scene on the Strait. It was in, uh, in August, and it was in Benicia, California, outside of San Francisco. And there I met some plein air painters, and it's the first ones I ever met. The first guy I met was a fellow by the name of Kevin Corder. And I talked to Kevin, I said, how do I learn how to do this? And he started telling me, you've got to do a lot of paintings outdoors. He said, go back, get an outdoor easel set up, make it easy. He told me a little bit about how to do it. He said, go paint 100 paintings. Give yourself 30 minutes per painting. And once you've got to 100 paintings, you'll start mastering. So I went back and I painted my 100 paintings. Well, Kevin and I are great friends to this day, and he's become uh, just a very well-known and fabulous painter. And, but it, it was all of that that led me to, to the world of plein air. Well, from that, I ended up going to an event that was put on by the Plein Air Painters of America. And it was in Connecticut, and a bunch of painters got together. Well, that event... Uh, led me to realize that there was this movement of painters. There were a couple hundred people there, and I thought, this is really interesting. And I'm in the publishing business. I publish magazines for a living. And so I started looking around. Is there a magazine devoted to plein air? And there wasn't. So I started picking up the phone and calling people and researching and finding out would, would they like that. And uh, the next thing you know, I launched plein air magazine. Well, that's what got me in to the art business, uh, and it all started because of the influence of my mother, it all started because my wife nudged me to go take an art lesson, and today, everything that we have in our organization around art is because of those two events, and a person can have a lot of impact. I mean, today, as we speak, we have Plain Air Magazine, we have Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, we have Artist Advocate Magazine, we have the plein air convention. Uh, we have just a, a lot of various things going on. We're very committed to art. We're not a company that does something because it makes money. If it makes money, that's also nice. That's a benefit. But we always believe that if we put something else like passion first, that's what really makes a difference. Well, I'm passionate about art. I'm passionate about plein air painting, and plein air magazine serves that passion. This is not a hobby business. We're very serious about it. We have millions of dollars literally invested in it. We have editors, we have staff, we have art directors, we have promotions people, we have accountants, we have the whole thing. This is a very serious endeavor. It's not a hobby business. But what we do is focus on what we're passionate about in our company. The people who work for Plein Air Magazine are Plein Air Painters. Our editor, Steve Doherty, is a Plein Air Painter. Our, um, our head of sales is a Plein Air Painter. Some of our salespeople are Plein Air Painters. Three of them are, as a matter of fact. Um, and uh, one of our corporate executives in the company is a Plein Air Painter. I mean, how great is that? So we have a passion for Plein Air Painting. We have a passion for figurative painting. Fine Art Connoisseur is mostly about figurative painting, mostly 18th and 19th century uh, historical, and also focused on the living artists who are working in that traditional academic method, that high quality, the, the people who are focused on doing things right, taking the techniques that were taught three, four hundred years ago and passed down. Those techniques were almost lost. 
They were almost lost when modernism hit the Armory Show in 1913. And as a result, one generation, the next generation started doing modernism. And I'm not against modernism, but I want to keep these techniques alive. And, and, and I'm so encouraged because now there are loads, 2,500, 3,000, 4,000, 19 and 20 year olds who are going to these ateliers in New York and Florence and Chicago and Los Angeles and around the world and they're engaged in studying traditional academic methods and they're not repeating the past. They're taking this classic form of figurative study and they're putting it into modern environments. They're not repeating what was done 400 years ago. They're creating what is relevant today. And this is new and cutting edge and this is where things are, direct, are going. Modernism is starting to get out of vogue and every hundred years things cycle back and well modernism now next year is going to be a hundred years old. Things will cycle back to representational art and that's what Fine Art Connoisseur is all about and we're passionate about it. Our editor Peter Trippi is not just an art magazine editor, he's a museum director and the re reason he's in that seat is because I had a problem to solve. I had an editor, she was a great editor, she was doing a great job, but at the end of the day, I was dissatisfied with some of the images that were showing up in the magazine. So I had met Peter Trippi at a cocktail party, and Peter um, and I hit it off, and I liked what he had to say, and he was the director of the Dehesh Museum. So one day I was in New York, and I walked into the museum, and I asked to see him, and he had some time, and I said, look, I need to find out how to solve this problem. Who can help me vet out the images so that if there's a disagreement between me and my editor, we will have someone who can say, yes, this is quality. And he said, you know, I'm kind of thinking about leaving here because the museum's going to change. And so I hired him. And this is a man who's the world's foremost expert on John Waterhouse. He's a specialist in 18th and 19th century art. He's well respected. He was with the Brooklyn Museum of Art. He went to the Courtauld Institute, one of the most respected art institutes in the world. No art magazine has a museum director as its editor. And as a result, Peter has these fabulous contacts. He opens doors at all angles of the art world. We have some of the best writers in the world. So that's kind of how it all started. That's kind of what we ended up with. And we are absolutely passionate about what we do. We're absolutely passionate about art.